wondering which baby products are worth it. In this video and my next one, I'm going to share which baby items are worth splurging on, saving on, or skipping. If you guys are new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, as well as Montessori at home tips. I have a four-year-old and an 18-month-old. We recently sold our house and all of our stuff in it and are now traveling across the state of Florida currently, but who knows where we're going to go next, living in Airbnbs. Some of these items I no longer have. We sold them. Some of these items are way in storage, so I'm not going to be able to show all of them necessarily. I'm really kind of paring down this list from the perspective of somebody that just get rid of everything and which items were the hardest to part with and which items we wish we would have gotten instead because we ended up buying after trying to save money in other ways. Then as a little bonus, I wanted to share some newborn baby essentials, kind of rapid fire. Number one's going to be an electric nail filer. This makes baby nail clippings so much easier. You don't have to worry about hurting them. And then once your baby outgrows that, I would suggest getting this nail clipper, which has like a safety bumper so you can never cut too low. I also suggest parents have a nose Frida as well as a Windy. I also am a big fan of the baby list bottle box, which gives you a nice little sampling of bottles. Figure out which one your baby wants and figure out if you're even going to need bottles. That was all we ever bought and it was all we've ever needed between two kids. I also really suggest parents have a stethoscope as well as a, an otoscope and a baby thermometer. We have this one that does both the forehead and the ear and a pulse ox. Hopefully you never needed them, but let me tell you, one of the first things I suggest parents do is you get used to listening to their lungs. That way you will always be able to hear what normal sounded like for your baby as well as hearing if there are any problems. Autoscope is also really handy because kids have like a lot of ear stuff that goes on inevitably and you're able to just kind of go in peek. We weren't able to get in like with our pediatrician sometimes so for me to be able to just go see is something ruptured? Is it just fluid behind the ear? It made a lot of things a lot easier. Baby items to splurge on. So these are going to be some of the items that I think are worth a more significant investment. First we got to talk about strollers because that is always the big question research. It feels like such a commitment because strollers are so expensive in themselves. The two that I'm going to suggest I actually don't have and I'm going to talk about what we did instead. And that's going to be the Duna and the Upa Baby Vista travel system. Both of these are designed for newborn use. The Duna is basically your car seat and your stroller in an all-in-one package. You simply unhook the car seat from the car seat base, flip the wheels out which are attached to the car seat, and then you are good to go strolling along. This is really convenient for families that are in and out of the car a lot, that travel a lot, and don't necessarily want to use trunk space for a stroller, and they just want to kind of built into their actual car seat. And this is also really good for families with kids who are older, and maybe I already got rid of all their baby stuff, where, I mean, inevitably, the older your kids get, the more you're in and out of your car. With such an awesome, convenient setup, does come some drawbacks. Number one is the actual stroller frame is pretty short. I would really say like if you're taller than like 5'7", pushing that stroller may feel a little awkward for you. Additionally, compared to some of the other premium strollers on the market, the push of it just feels a little bit more flimsy. Not necessarily as smooth of a push if you're going on like gravel roads or anything like that, but it's going to be a better push than some of the budget umbrella stroller type situations. And of course you can use this through the first year. So Similar to an infant car seat. Now, if this is your first kid, I would suggest not going with that, but instead going with the Upper Baby Vista travel system. And this has got so many options for you. You can go ahead and just get your basic stroller. It can convert to attach a car seat to it. It can convert with a bassinet attachment. If you have multiple kids, you can add in a second seat to the frame, or it has like this little piggyback attachment that you put at the base and toddlers can kind of stand on. My toddler used to sit on ours, which I guess leads me to which one we had, the Baby Jogger City Lux system, which is kind of like a budget-friendly version of the Oppa Baby Vista. You can do forward pacing, rear pacing. The push on it is super smooth, super comfortable. You can do one-handed turning, great undercarriage storage. There's bassinet attachments, second seat attachments, piggyback attachments, all just like the Oppa Baby Vista. And the reason though why I wish we would have splurged on the Oppa Baby Vista, maybe this is just because we live by the beach, I'm not totally sure, but after like a year, 
we couldn't fold it down anymore. We could not pull up on the levers to fold it flat to get it into our trunk any longer. And the other reason I didn't love it is when the piggyback attachment was on, my walking gait, and I'm pretty short, would kick the base of it. It was just like an uncomfortable push. But all I know is my friends who live just as close to the beach as I do with their upper babies never had that rust problem like we did. Which I guess leads me to my next storage item, which is a solid baby carrier. Baby wearing is one of my favorite things. Not only does it give you lots of quality bonding time with your baby, it also lets you go hands-free to get things done. For newborns, my personal favorite is the Ergo Baby Embrace Carrier. I did a full review on best baby carriers for breastfeeding moms, so I go way in depth in showing you how that works and how it compares to others. But it really takes the pressure off of mom's back and distributes the weight across your shoulders a little bit better in my opinion. It's super easy to get on, much easier learning curve than say a baby baby wrap, which I do love. And if you are going to splurge on a baby wrap, I highly suggest the Solly baby wraps. They are super lightweight, beautiful, soft, breathable, 10 to 10 recommend those. Let's talk about crib mattresses now. So this is where your baby's going to spend a ton of time in their life. And so you obviously want to choose a good quality one free from as many chemicals as possible. With my first, we chose the Baby Leto Pure Core Hybrid Mattress, which is Green Guard Gold certified, which scans for like a bunch of the toxic chemicals and things like that. One side is a bit firmer for the newborn days and then the other side is a bit softer for the toddler years. It's a nice thick mattress. She never had any problems sleeping on it. I found it to be comfortable too as an adult. Didn't have really any complaints with those. However, once we hit the potty training stage, I discovered the Newton crib mattress. And if I was starting over from scratch, I would probably start with a Newton today. Typically parents of newborns absolutely love this mattress because it is made from a first of its kind material called a woven air that's 90% air and 10% food grade polymers which make it totally breathable and prevents overheating as well as it does carry that green guard gold certification too. The reason that we got it and moved her from her crib mattress into a big queen size bed and gave my son the crib mattress and my daughter ended up having a potty training sleep regression and I got really tired having to clean queen bedding every day so I was like okay until you sort this thing out Let's try this Newton crib mattress because it is 100% washable from the outer shell to the inside core, making it a fantastic potty training option. It's a really cool too how they do it where the outer shell material for the potty training side is super quick dry. It literally just kind of disperses the liquid and it starts to dry up really nicely without breaking the barrier into the core. And the other reason why we love the Newton crib mattress and the why we decided to keep that one when we sold all of our stuff and moved is because I could easily vacuum seal it down into almost nothing, toss that into our trunk, and that is actually the mattress that we have taken on the road with us for my son. I will say like from an adult weight perspective, definitely not as supportive for adults, but my son has loved that mattress since we transitioned him into it. And the fact that it's so easy to store, shrink down, travel with, wash, it's going to be one of the most breathable mattresses out out there and also if you have an allergy kiddo it's great because it's just not gonna hold on to like dust mites and other little allergens like other mattresses will. And the last crib mattress I just want to give an honorable mention to is the Nature Pedic crib mattress which is definitely one of the most clean non-toxic mattress companies on the market. Next is gonna be sleep sacks. Definitely one of my favorite sleep accessories and our favorites are the love to dream which allow you to swaddle with arms up, arms down, or even unzip the arms arms or arms free. The reason I love that is because you just don't know what your baby's gonna like or not like. My son absolutely hated arms down swaddling. He wanted his arms free as fast as possible and this gave us that flexibility and freedom without having to buy 500 different things. We live in Florida so it does not get super cold here but if we did live somewhere colder I would definitely look at different tall gradings on their sleep sacks which is essentially thermal overall grade and I have a whole blog post on how to dress your baby when sleeping in a cold room. So 1010 recommend sleep socks. They're little wearable blankets and allow you to follow safe sleep standards. So much easier than swaddles and easy for diaper changes too because you can usually zip them from the bottom.
them up. Next is going to be a baby bouncer. Not typically a big fan of baby containers. However, if you are going to opt for one, I recommend either the Ergo Baby Evolve 3-in-1 bouncer or the Baby Bjorn bouncer. I have a whole video going more into depth on that. But basically, the Ergo Baby Evolve is just a much easier buckle in feature than the Baby Bjorn bouncer. It's also easier to transition between the different heights of it with a foot paddle. And then they have some added safety features with like a safety lock on your height setting and some added a rubberized resistance if you have slippery floors. Now, on the other hand, the Baby Bjorn bouncer, something slightly more lightweight than the Ergo Baby Evolve as well as if you plan to bring your baby bouncer to the beach, that rubberized safety feature of the Ergo Baby Evolve is gonna cling onto and hold sand more than the Baby Bjorn. If you don't plan to bring a baby bouncer to the beach, then I would probably just go with the Ergo Baby Evolve. If you do plan to bring it to the beach, kind of just sit with what do you care more about. And I like those more than any sort of baby swing or jumper or anything like that because baby bouncers are just tried and true. Kids love them. I've used baby bouncers since I was babysitting and nannying at 13 years old. I've not met a baby that does not like a bouncer, but I've met a lot of babies who do not like swings. And then my last splurge item is actually going to be a slumber pod, which I thought was the silliest thing at first. I thought it was such an overpriced tent that can fit a pack and play, a crib, or a toddler bed inside of there. Now that we have one, I do not know how we lived without it for so long. Whether you travel a lot or not, I found it also just makes the transition out of a crib a lot easier. When we used to travel with my first, I would spend so much time trying to baby proof our hotel rooms or our Airbnbs. And it was just a very stressful situation. I'm not gonna lie. Even her room back at home always had like some element of just too much light coming in. I had like the black film window cling, which was super annoying. I had blackout curtains. I used Trader Joe's bags and taped her window with them to just get it dark in there. Fast forward to my second kid. I'm still doing the same song and dance. But when we decided to sell our house, we we moved out of it and into my in-law's house. My son was sleeping in my in-law's walk-in closet. It was big enough for his crib mattress, but not big enough for his crib. My solution was to get the slumber pod, which I could at least tuck the ends of underneath the crib mattress, provided just like a safety container so he couldn't pull down their clothes and get into trouble when a crib just wasn't available to him. It also helped us with the transition from a crib to a toddler bed because we can leave that open. He can crawl in there. He has plenty of independence, but he still has nice kind of like cocoon that feels very safe for him. Make sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell because in my next video, I'm going to talk about the baby items to save on or skip altogether. In the meantime, be sure to go back and check out my Montessori gift guide suggestions as well as my Montessori activities for newborns. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, drop a comment below with what your splurge items were. I'd love to hear them. My name's Rachel. Have a good one.